Hello friends, this video on integrals part 2 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Before watching this video, please make sure that you have watched part 1. Let's take one practical example in real life where we can use integral or I'll tell you an example with this. I'll tell you why to study integration. For example, you have this two, uh, we can say mountain or slopes, you can say. This is a plain slope, this is a curved slope. In first case, you have to take this wooden block from here to top. You can just slide it. In this case, if you want to take this again a wooden slot, it goes through a curved area. If you see, it, go, it went through a curved area. In this case, first case, if you see, the work done required is finding is very easy because at any point of time, since the area is not curved, it is very easy to find, right? Because if you want to find, for example, at any point, the, the what you call total force required from here to here, if you see the force required at any point is almost constant, why? Right? Because the angle is constant, right? Because this is the force you are applying, this is the frictional force. So this angle is constant. So the force is always constant, correct? But in this case, the angle is changing. In this case, you have the angle is increasing. So the force which is required here, if it is F1, here this guy will be F2, at this point will be F3. And the force is all different. In this case, at all the points you will be requiring F1 force only. So here finding total force is easy because you can just sum up, but in this case it is difficult, right? But it, it follows a pattern. So in this case what we can do, we can use integration because we can break this force into small, small sections and for each of these sections we can find this force, right? And we can add all this. In this case, since you take any section, the force is all constant, so you don't need integration, but in this case, for every section this force varies. So we can divide this into small small sections and get the force and add this and this can be done using integration. So this is one uh, uh, example to explain integration in a layman term why we use integration because in a lot of places things are variable. Things are variable and you can you can't just add them and they are constantly in a very small interval. So what we do is we break those things into small intervals and then add those. And that is a real life or that is the main concept behind usage of integration. One more reason why we have integration is the mathematical curiosity. I'll tell you what this is. For example, we know that if you differentiate x cube, if you find d by dx of x cube, this is x square, correct? This we know. Now, I am asked what is that variable whose differentiation is x square? That is, what is that variable whose derivative is x square, correct? It can be a mathematical curiosity, right? Because we know that if you differentiate x cube, you can, you can x square. We can have this question, what is that variable for, if you, if you differentiate this, some variable, let's suppose that variable is y, so d by dy by dx is equal to x square. What is that variable? I want to know why. Y is what? How to find that? It is a very curious question because you have done a lot of differentiation. It, the question would have come to your mind, what is that? If you want to find the other way around, if you are given this x square and you want to find the value of y, how to find that? This is done using integration. So in this case, y will be nothing but you take x square, you say dx and you integrate using this symbol. We'll explain all the symbols, but this is how the normal convention is. If you have this kind of curve symbol with dx or dt or some variable, some d, some variable, that means you are talking about integration, correct? So this is the value actually. You, if you have this x square, you want to find the value of that function whose differentiation is x square. That is nothing but x square dot dx. Correct. So in this case, if you see that will come out to be x cube, we already know, and that will be nothing but. Sorry, this is three x square. So this is three x square. So three x square dx. Correct. 
Now I have to find in this case uh, y. So what I have to do is in this case the rule is if you have x to the power n and you say dx that becomes x to the power n plus 1 by n plus 1. So in this case it will become 3x square becomes 2 plus 1 and this by 2 plus 1. That is 3x cubed by 3 and that is x cubed. So if you see I got the value of y that is x cubed. But there is a catch here. If you observe carefully, if you take y is x cubed plus let's suppose 5 or x cubed plus 10 or x cubed plus any number 3 or you say x cubed plus any constant k, you find derivative of this. This is nothing but 3x square. You find derivative of this guy. This will also come out to be 3x square. You find derivative of this. This will also come out to be 3x square. And you find derivative of this also. This will also come out to be 3x square. So we are not sure if x cube was a number or x cube plus 5 was the number or x cube plus 10 was the number or x cube plus 3 was the number or x cube plus k was the number. That's why we add a constant when you do integration. And that is the reason why we have a constant here. Because you see antiderivative, you don't know whether this constant was 3, 5, 10 or k, any, any number because you take any constant number, you, you derivate this, this becomes 0. Correct? So that is the reason why we have, we add constant. But if you're not understanding much, it's okay because we'll again go through these things that x to the power n dx is equal to x to the power n plus 1 x plus n plus 1. These formulas will be covering in the next few slides. But just try to understand why we are going through this slide is we want to tell you that there is a mathematical curiosity behind integral. The reason why we, one of the reasons why we study integral is because we are sometimes curious because if we have a number x cube, we differentiated this, we got 3x square. Sometimes we want to say that, okay, let's let's find the number uh, whose differentiation is 3x square. So in that case, we have to use integral to find such numbers. And integral symbol is something like this. Let's discuss some common terms used in integration. As I told, integration is something like this, y is equal to fx dot dx, correct? So it is a curved shape like this and you have some function for which you have to find integration. So this guy is called integrand, the term used, right? This x is the variable here, x is the variable of integration. So the main term is the fx here is called integrand and this symbol is mandatory for integral. We'll explain there are two kinds of integral actually which is definite and indefinite. We'll explain those things but just try to understand that uh, the integral is looks like this. You have some function, you have dot, it can be x or y or any, any variable, dot d some variable and you have this kind of symbol then this is called integration symbol. So integral uh, calculus consists of two forms actually, definite and indefinite. I'll tell you what. So, if I have some curve, some curve that is fx. If I'm saying I am finding an indefinite integral, it will be something like this fx dot dx. Y is equal to fx dot dx. Because there is no interval defined here. Because there is no starting interval, there is no closing interval, right? There is no opening, no, no closing interval. But this is called Definite integral, indefinite integral. But if you have this kind of function, and if I'm, I'm, this big function, let's suppose I have, I want to find the integration only from, let's suppose, minus 1 to 5. In this case, I have my interval defined. The moment I define interval, then this looks like this minus 1 to 5 fx dot dx. The same thing, but in this case, my interval is defined. So the moment you have a definite interval, the open and the close intervals, the starting, uh, starting and the closing intervals, then that is called a definite integral. And when you don't have any, any uh, intervals defined, that is called indefinite integral. They are almost same, the only thing is that in, in case of 
definite integral you get some definite values because you know the area which you define the definite integral is nothing but area of this curve this this area the the shaded one but in case of indefinite there is no range there is no interval nothing is there so you don't get the area but it is nothing but the function for which the differentiation is this guy right function the, the, the function be fx if this guy is equal to fx then this is nothing but the function for which the derivative is this guy correct so let's start thank you visit examfear.com to watch free educational videos try free online tests get the best quality study materials study from the best tutors and mentors and much more thanks once again